The readings will now be given by Elizabeth from Georgia. The Bible. Psalms. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Romans. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Ephesians. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Matthew. And Jesus went about all Galilee, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth a light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. 1 Corinthians Now there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit and there are differences of administration but the same Lord And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gift of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. 
and he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Philippians Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Who hath saved us and called us with unholy calling, not according to our work, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. God is the life or intelligence, which forms and preserves the individuality and identity of animals as well as of men. The divine ego, or individuality, is reflected in all spiritual individuality, from the infinitesimal to the infinite. The individuality of man is no less tangible because it is spiritual and because his life is not at the mercy of matter. The understanding of his spiritual individuality makes man more real, more formidable in truth, and enables him to conquer sin, disease, and death. The universe of spirit is peopled with spiritual beings, and its government is divine science. Man is the offspring, not of the lowest, but of the highest qualities of mind. Man understands spiritual existence in proportion as his treasures of truth and love are enlarged. Mortals must gravitate Godward. Their affections and aims grow spiritual. They must mirror the broader interpretations of being and gain some proper sense of the infinite in order that sin and mortality may be put off. This scientific sense of being, forsaking matter for spirit, by no means suggest man's absorption into deity and the loss of his identity, but confers upon man enlarged individuality, a wider sphere of thought and action, a more expansive love, a higher and more permanent peace. A knowledge of the science of being develop the latent abilities and possibilities of man. It extends the atmosphere of thought, giving mortals access to broader and higher realms. It raises the thinker into his native air of insight and perspicacity. Spirit diversifies, classifies, and individualizes all thoughts, which are as eternal as the mind conceiving them. But the intelligence, existence, 
and continuity of all individuality remain in God, who is the divinely creative principle thereof. Spirit God gathers unformed thoughts into their proper channels and unfolds these thoughts even as he opens the petals of a holy purpose in order that the purpose may appear. First, purify thought. Then put thought into words and words into deeds. And after much slipping and clamoring, you will go up the scale of science to the second rule and be made ruler over many things. Fidelity finds its reward and its strength in exalted purpose. Seeking is not sufficient whereby to arrive at the results of science. You must strive, and the glory of the strife comes of honesty and humility. The Christian strives for the spiritual. He abides in a right purpose, as in laws which it were impious to transgress, and follows truth fearlessly. The heart that beats mostly for self is seldom alight with love. To live as so as to keep human consciousness in constant relation with the divine, the spiritual and the eternal is to individualize infinite power and this is Christian science. One must fulfill one's mission without timidity or dissimulation for to be well done the work must be done unselfishly. Unselfish ambition noble life motives and purity. These constituents of thought mingling constitute individually and collectively true happiness, strength, and permanence. The lives of great men and women are miracles of patience and perseverance. Every luminary in the constellation of human greatness, like the stars, comes out in the darkness to shine with the reflected light of God. God expresses in man the infinite idea forever developing itself, broadening and rising higher and higher from a boundless basis. Seek to occupy no position whereto you do not feel that God ordains you. Never forsake your post without due deliberation and light. But always wait for God's finger to point the way. The only true ambition is to serve God and to help the race. Goodness never fails to receive its reward, for goodness makes life a blessing. As an active portion of one stupendous whole, goodness identifies man with universal good. Thus, may each member of this church rise above the oft-repeated inquiry, What am I? To the scientific response, I am able to impart truth, health, and happiness, and this is my rock of salvation and my reason for existing. Children of light, you are not children of darkness. Let your light shine. Keep in mind the foundations of Christian science one God and one Christ. 
Keep personality out of sight, and Christ's blessed are ye will seal your apostleship. When human struggles cease and mortals yield lovingly to the purpose of divine love, there will be no more sickness, sorrow, sin, and death. 